With this video I start a new vblog series. This very first one is about this object, the Robo Dolly. As the name implies, it is a robotic dolly for a video camera. I built this years ago with the idea to use it in filming documentaries. However, it resulted a little bit cumbersome and uh, eventually I found it not so useful, so it ended up here in this corner. Hello everybody and welcome to my inventor's cave. Since I want to recover the parts now, before dismantling it, I thought to show you how I've made it and what went wrong. The mistakes that made this robot not so helpful in practical usage. So first let's see how this robot works. On the control panel we have some indicator lights, power, start, the direction the robot is gonna go and battery low. This switch selects uh, whether the floor detectors uh, will sense the rising or falling age. While this knob is about to adjust the sensitivity of those detectors that are located here. Rising or falling age are for detecting white tags on dark floor or black tags on light floor so that it will work on any kind of floor. The detectors have a blue LID and a photoresistor that sees the floor. When a tag is detected, the internal controller will know that a position has been reached along the intended path. The idea behind this is the tags will work as a waypoint markers that can be easily changed without the need to change any photo parameter. Quite simple and effective. The robot can be programmed by entering one or more phases that are represented by these rows. Each phase defines what the robot will do. The ramp delay defines the speed at the end of the ramp, the direction backward or forward, and the way the phase will end after a given time or upon the detection of a tag. From the main screen it is possible to go to the preset screen to enter setting values that will be used by default. So the usage is relatively simple and the robot may be used when a scene must be repeated over and over again or a scene must follow a precise sequence of events or even for the automation of a tracking shot while staying in front of the camera like this. The pitfalls are to set up the scene a lot of time is required. The unit is rather heavy even though this might be a feature and uh, since I missed to install the steering motor it also requires trucks. Furthermore the benefit of having wheels to run directly over the floor or over a sidewalk or even a longer road is completely vanished because it has no dampeners on the wheels and again it will require trucks to run smoothly which is really annoying making this project a total failure. Maybe one day I will recover the controller to make a more practical dolly slider. However let's see more about this robot. Through this connector the dolly can be controlled by a remote control or by an external sequencer such as this intervalometer that I've made a couple of years ago. So let's now open the unit to have a look at the inside. This stuffing helps to reduce the noise coming from the mechanics and the 5 kHz power switching that drives the motor. The chassis is made out of wood and plywood covered with polyester resin and python in black. The brackets that hold the motor and the toothed wheels are made from hard mahogany plywood as you can see here in this detail. Then the parts were covered with a layer of polyester resin thickened with talcum or baby powder. After painting the inside in green and the outside in black the unit lost its woody look and appears a bit more engineered. The electronics were made hacking a programmable controller having an 80 mega 32 microcontroller, a display controller and uh, some other electronics that I built on a prototype board 
wired to the power section mounted on a frankly overkilling heatsink. The motion control is performed by DC motor and the tachometer for speed feedback. The driver is made with a cup of MOSFETs. The shunt is used to limit the current. To commute back and forward, a cup of relays switch the polarity of the motor, so the MOSFETs simply switch the PWM just to drive the current to the motor always in one direction. Also, the power section includes the battery charger. The control panel hosts uh, the display controller, which is a programmable controller itself. This puppy is really nice and uh, I use it in many applications, such as uh, the very same intervalometer that I mentioned earlier. Maybe I will show more in a video in the future. Here the display controller governs the robot's main functions and uh, receives commands and signals to perform those operations. In this picture can be seen the floor for the sensors that have made by inserting into a short pipe a blue LED on a side and uh, split up by a small black cardboard a photoresistor on the other side and the whole thing set with hot glue. These photosensors will detect the presence of black or white tags used to instruct the robot by seeing the changes in the reflected blue light from the floor. The display controller then controls the power unit that drives the motor by the means of a serial RS485 link. Everything was finally assembled into the body of the robot and programmed. As I've said at the beginning, I do not longer use this robot, so I decided to dismantle it and recover the parts. The motors is really overkilling for this application. The whole machine is quite cumbersome and uh, miss some important features such as dampeners on the wheels and a steering motor to follow curved paths. If you ever think to make something similar, I recommend to include those features, as well as a radio remote control. I've put a link to my website in the description below, where I'll publish updates if any will become available. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more, let me know leaving a comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and check the bell sign on the top right corner to see when new videos will be available. Thanks for watching! Bye!